For those of you that I haven't met yet, my name is Natalie. I am our Youth and Young Adult Director, and it is my pleasure woof, to bring you the third week of this message um, called Game Show Faith. Has anybody been here for a portion of this series? What are some other games? What are some games that we've looked at so far? Amazing Race. Wheel of Fortune. Awesome. Is that all we've done here? That's all we've done here because this is week three, obviously. So those are two of them. This is week three. And this week, we are playing The Price is Right. Oh, there it is. Here it comes. Television's most exciting hour of fantastic prizes. The fabulous 60 Minutes Price is Right. Art Wedge, come on down. Sandy Morris, come on down. Joey Dale, come on down. Jill Gertz, come on down. Sandy Morris, come on down. <laughs> you are the first four contestants on The Price is Right. And here is your host, Natalie Butler. Good morning and welcome to The Price is Right. These are our first four contestants this morning. And we're going to be asking them a question. And as you know, the person with the closest answer without going over is going to win. Now, we will accept answers in both U.S. dollars and denarii. I have a... I have a marker for you, so when you think you know the answer, you'll just write it on the front of your little podium there. The question is, in the Bible, there's a story where Mary pours oil all over Jesus' feet and then wipes it off with her hair. How much did the oil cost? We're, we're, we're accepting dollars and denarii. I'll go ahead and hand this over here. Go ahead and pass that pen on down. It can be today's money. <laughs> yes. Ooh, love that. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So, Art, what is your answer? Free. Free. Ooh. Joey? Five dollars. Five dollars. Jill? Three hundred denarii. Three hundred denarii. <laughs> Five million. Five million. <laughs> so we have a Bible scholar on our hands because Jill is 100% correct. It was 300 denarii. So, Darren, can you tell our winner what she won? Jill Gertz, you won a brand new car. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys can return to your seat. Thank you so much. Oh, this was so much fun. <laughs> 300 denarii is about $15 US, which is why we were going to take both, but Jill nailed it. So I'll take that. So please join me in a word of, or actually, no, I'm sorry. You're not going to join me in a word of prayer just yet. We're going to, we'll get to that in a second because we're not done playing the game because you guys get to play the game now. So go ahead and just call out your answers. How many pieces of silver did Judas receive for Jesus's ransom? 30. 30 yes. <laughs> Thank you for raising your hand. <laughs> How many loaves fed the 5,000? Five. Yes, it was two fish, but five loaves. How many lambs were needed for the sacrifice on the Day of Atonement? One, one million. Seven. Yes, seven. How much does salvation cost? Ooh. We're going to be talking about that today. Please join me in a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for the chance to be together this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to have fun. Thank you for the chance to laugh. Thank you for the people surrounding us. 
continue to work in us and through us. In your name we pray. Amen. In the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. But then we broke it. John echoes Genesis. If you're familiar with Genesis, you know that it also started with what? In the beginning. In the beginning, God created. He created the heavens and the earth, the plants and all of the animals, and then us. He created people to be in an intimate relationship with him. And he said it was good. It was holy, just like God is holy and perfect and righteous. But then we broke it. We did the one thing he asked us not to do, and sin entered the world and our hearts and broke the perfect, holy relationship that we had with God. We were created holy, but sin wrecked us. And what is sin? Maybe something specific comes to mind when I ask that question. My personal definition of sin is anything that separates us from God. So this intimate relationship we had with him was stained by sin and we were separated. But that wasn't what God wanted. God didn't create us to be separated from him. His great love for us, because of that great love, he made a way for us to be with him again. He implemented the sacrificial system. In the books of Leviticus and Numbers, any lovers of Leviticus and Numbers? I knew it. Ron, I knew it. Me too. I love Leviticus. So in those books, first we're given the law from Moses. These were the ways that we were supposed to live differently so that we, would, we wouldn't just look like everybody else. The ways that we were to live in order to be holy and righteous and right with God. But it is impossible to do all of those things in our own flesh and with our own effort. So also in those books, we find chapter after chapter outlining the different types of sacrifices that would be made to atone or make amends for when we mess up. It's boring and it's repetitive, but it's really beautiful. But I can't imagine what that temple would have been like. The priests spent all of their time making sacrifices. The people would bring bulls and lambs, birds, grain, wine, oil. The smell of burnt things would fill the air, and the altar was covered in blood. Day and night, the priests worked, constantly settling debts of sin because debts were constantly being racked up. In addition to the daily sacrifices, though, there were also weekly, monthly, and annual sacrifices that had to be recognized and performed, like the Day of Atonement. We also know this as Yom Kippur. While today it's celebrated with prayer and fasting, focusing on confession, in the Old Testament, this high holiday included huge sacrifices that happened once a year to atone for the sins of the community and redeem the Israelites. In Numbers 29, we read this. 10 days later, on the 10th day of the same month, you must call another holy assembly. On that day, the day of atonement, the people must go without food and must do no ordinary work. You must present a burnt offering as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. It will consist of one young bull, one ram, and seven one-year-old male lambs, all with no defects. These offerings must be accompanied by the prescribed grain offerings of choice flour moistened with olive oil, six quarts of choice flour with the bull, four quarts of choice flour with the ram, and two quarts of choice flour with each of the seven lambs. You must also sacrifice one male goat for a sin offering. This is in addition to the sin offering of atonement and the regular daily burnt offering with its grain offering and their accompanying liquid offerings. But this solution was only temporary. The daily sacrifices would then resume. 
The process was unending and very precise. Everything had to be perfect. But I want to pause for just a second. Because there might be some people in the room that didn't know that this was part of our history. Maybe this is the first time you're hearing about God asking for blood sacrifices. Maybe you're wondering what you've gotten yourself into, or you're looking at your spouse or your friend and wondering what they have gotten you into. But don't worry, because we don't do this anymore. And there's a really good reason for that, and we'll get there. But right now, I really want to paint a picture of what it took for us to be made right with God. In order to atone for our sin, it required death. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. But what is a wage? You Something you earn, right? You don't just get a wage for nothing. You go to work, you get your wage. It's something that you have earned. A popular criticism of God is how unrelenting he is. Sometimes people look at the Old Testament and they see death and destruction and decide that God is evil. I've even heard Christians say that they just focus on the New Testament because, well, the God of the Old Testament was judgmental and vengeful. They claim that there's no grace in the Old Testament, that grace only came through Jesus, and maybe that's how you feel. Maybe you read about the Day of Atonement or the sacrifices or the wars in the Old Testament and you think there's no way that God can be the same. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. Friends, John is talking about Jesus. Jesus didn't just show up in Matthew. He didn't just roll into the Old Testament and change everything. He was there at the very beginning. Jesus is God. And he loved his creation. And even though we messed up and we earned death, he wanted to make a way for us. The sacrificial system wasn't vengeful or evil. The sacrificial system was created out of his desire to be close to us. God is holy. And we are not holy and the holy and the unholy can't coexist. We needed to be made clean. There needed to be death in order for us to be made right with God. Romans continues, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. What is a gift? If a wage is something you earn, what is a gift? It's just something you're given. With nothing expected in return, a gift is just something somebody wants you to have. I said it's a popular criticism of God, how unrelenting he is, and he is. He is unrelenting. His love is unrelenting, and his pursuit of us is unrelenting. His justice, his holiness, and his mercy is unrelenting. John 1, 5 through 18 the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son, John testified about him when he shouted to the crowds, this is the one I was talking about when I said, someone is coming after me who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before me. From his abundance, we have received one gracious blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses, but God's unfailing love and faithfulness came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the unique one who himself is God 
is near to the Father's heart, and he has revealed God to us. In the middle of darkness, in the middle of sin and death and blood being spilled, a light entered the world. Jesus, God became a human because we could never be made right with God on our own. We could make all of the sacrifices and pray all of the prayers and do all of the things, but we would never be able to cover all of our sin. We earned death. We still earn death. We are broken and sinful and our wage is death. But Jesus, God in the flesh, came to earth to show us a new way of life. It's not simply that sacrifices are no longer relevant. They're no longer needed. Jesus gave himself up as the final sacrifice. He went to the cross and gave his life to pay our debt, the debt that we incurred. Jesus gave his life for you. Leviticus 1.3 says, if the animal you present as a burnt offering is from the herd, it must be a male with no defects. Numbers 29.8 says, you must present a burnt offering as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. It will consist of one young bull, one ram, and seven one-year-old male lambs, all with no defects. Over and over, the sacrifice is called for perfect, unblemished lambs. Jesus was that perfect, unblemished lamb. The final sacrifice made on our behalf. He lived a sinless, perfect life, but he died the death of a sinner. Peter writes in 1 Peter, it was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb of God. God chose him for your ransom long before the world began, but now in these last days, he has been revealed for your sake. John 3, 16, read this one with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Go ahead and open up your bulletin. There's some notes in there for you. And John 3.16 is written, but there's something missing. What's missing? The world. Because Jesus didn't just die for the world. He actually died for you. I want you to fill in that blank with your name. Because even though it happened 2,000 years ago, you were in mind. Not only did he die in our place, but he actually went further and defeated death completely. When you believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, when you believe that he stepped in and died the death that you deserved, when you believe that three days later he stepped out of that grave, then you get to share in the eternal, never-ending, glorious life that he promised. Death doesn't have the final say anymore. When death steals us from this world, we get to enter into eternity because of Jesus' sacrifice. Death was defeated and we were made right with God because Jesus took away the stain of our sin. But this prize isn't just in eternity. We get to live every single day right now with joy and hope. We don't have to feel compelled to hide from God and live riddled with guilt and shame. We get to be free. In fact, our kiddos sang about that this morning. Do you guys remember the song? Think you can sing it with me? Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Well done. Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. But my purpose, Jesus' purpose, is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Jesus made sure that the price was right so that we could live abundantly here with joy and peace and hope, knowing that the end of this life, we will receive eternity in his presence. We might get excited when our name gets called, or maybe you don't get excited when your name gets called, but we all get excited when we get a brand new car, but you have won so much more. The death and resurrection of Jesus Christ has bought you hope and joy and peace and everlasting life. 
And I hope that the same joy and excitement and adrenaline rush that washes over you whenever you remember what Jesus did on your behalf and that every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Please join me in a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much again for the chance to be together. Thank you for everything you have done for us. Thank you for wanting to be close to us. Thank you for wanting to be in a relationship with us, going out of your way and coming down, entering flesh so that you could die on our behalf. Help us to live in such a way that we are grateful for the things that you have done for us. Continue to work in us and through us. In your name we pray. Amen.